message was going to be dangerous today. <laughs> All right, uh, just two more things. This week, uh, our country is, uh, our government, our state leaders, our local leaders are having a National Day of Prayer emphasis. And it's every, every May, the first Thursday, that's coming up this Thursday. So if you're interested and you want to be involved, there's two, two opportunities for you to be involved in, which is uh, at noon at the courthouse right here. It's not that far from here. Uh, at noon until 1 o'clock, if you can take lunchtime, if you can just you know, take some time, please make every effort. I'll, we'll be there. The Lord willing, I'll be there. Pray. And then in the evening, also at Golden Gate Community Park uh, at 7 at the band shell there at 7 o'clock, there will be about 40 pastors or so that will be there as well uh, praying. And uh, if you want to come, bring a lawn chair or whatever. If you, but they'll have seating available if you don't have uh, that. Don't worry about it. But just if you want to be a part of this National Day of Prayer, I kind of feel like that uh, when our government, who seems to have some issues, uh, gives us the opportunity to pray and gives us a platform to pray and gives us actually the right to pray right in front of the courthouse steps and gives us the right to have a National Day of Prayer. Uh, and we, need, as Christians, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land. And I think that in many ways we need healing with all the things that are going on. So please remember that. Also, uh, John, one of our elders, he's had, uh, has had, he had cancer, but he also feels like there's a lot, a lot of people that need support. And so he's starting a group. It's a life group called Christians Conquering Cancer. Uh, so the C word, you know, Christians, sometimes that people have a word problem with that. Conquering, we want to conquer that in the name of Jesus, and we yeah. want him. So on Tuesday night at 6.30, 630 right here at Tree of Life Church, if you want to be a part of that group, if you're struggling with cancer and you need to some support and you feel like that there's not enough, because we believe that through Christ, God wants to heal. God wants to heal our mind, give us his courage and strength to walk through our difficulties together. So just wanted to make sure that's available for you. Would you stand with me real quick? Thank you for that. Um, our theme has been on the third day, on the third day. And I, I think I could probably preach another a month or two on this sub subject and not run out of material. But at the same time, this is going to be our last Sunday on the series. And I, I just want to entitle it, Living the Third Day Life. Living the Third Day Life. Living it. And not just talking about it, and not just kind of, oh yeah, Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, but living the third day life is very important. And this has been our theme scripture from Hosea. It's, a, it's just a simple three verses. And yet at the same time, come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we might live in his sight. There is a unity that God wants to bring about. I think all of us can relate to a day one experience, a day two experience. But where God wants us to live is on the third day. He wants us to truly grab all of this. And our subject in verse 3 has been continued on this. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. The more that we know about God, the more we understand that his desire is to bless our socks off, is to bless our lives. And sometimes we're not even aware of all the blessings that he wants to bestow upon us. And he wants to establish these blessings like the morning. He wants to pour out his blessings like the rain, the former and the latter rain. So, Father, we humbly come before you today. We ask, Lord, for your guidance, for your direction. Help us to truly grab a hold of your truth, living in the third day life, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. Now, <clears throat> when I, I was thinking about this, and I could go in all kinds of different directions, but I just picked out one character in the Bible we, who we probably can relate to more than anyone else, and which is Peter. Peter is a, is a unique character in the Bible. He was a disciple. Uh, he was an interesting character who came along. He stuck his foot in his mouth a few times. He said things he probably would have agreed. He denied Christ. He did all kinds of things, but yet at the same time, 
he models, I think, who we are as people. He models our struggle of life uh, and our desire to seek God. And so I want to kind of start this out in Matthew chapter 6, and you'll see uh, Matthew chapter 16. And we're going to look at this and just kind of get a better understanding of this. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So here, this is the, the uh, just a simple thought here as we start this message. What does the world say who Jesus Christ is? You know, I mean, you, this is, you can go different places around the world. You can go to you can go to a politician and ask him. Oh, yeah, he's a. You know, you can ask different religions. You can ask. Oh, he's a great teacher. All these things that are, are kind of thrown out, and we see that here. But Jesus Christ is asking the question, "Who am I?" When Jesus came, let's go on. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Do you see the different, it's, it's kind of like it's all over the place. And I think in some ways we see that in our society as well, all over the place. Oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. But their actions don't support it. So let's read on a little bit more. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? And I want to kind of really emphasize this a little bit more. It doesn't matter what I think he is. It doesn't matter what the person next to you thinks he is. It matters what you, as an individual, believe about Jesus Christ. Who is he? Who is he? Because this is not something we we're trying to force on people, but your identity or your understanding of who he is is a key to how you live your life. Whether you live in... On the first day, second day, or third day. It really truly depends. Are you working on me, Crystal? No. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's, it's important for us to say who he is. And here we go, verse 16. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. If you take it out of the monitors, I think that's where the, my, my problem is. Take it out of the monitors, and I'll be happy. I promise. I'm happy anyway. So, Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So here is this, this thing where, who do you say that I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That in itself kind of sets this up. See, the, the, the one thing about the world, the one thing about non-believers, if you want to say, they don't want to identify with Christ because if they do, they have to admit there's something bigger going on than them. They have to admit maybe that their life is not in proper alignment with Him. I want to live the third day life because I believe that He died and He rose and He conquered death and the grave and sin for me. I believe that he is the Christ, the anointed one, the son of God. And upon that confession, I live my life. I don't just pretend. I don't just say it. I want to live it. And so this is what we see here. So it goes on to say this to us. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church in the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. What he's simply saying here is that I'm identifying and I know you too. He says, you're Peter. He's good. You know me and I know you. Hey, your name's Peter, isn't it? Hey, Peter. I'm Andrew. We're in agreement together in each other's names. We, we have a relationship. We know each other. The, the, the challenge here is to dig it even a little deeper and to say, what is he saying? He's not saying that uh, this is, he, he's given some really cool things here, but he's communicating the importance that our confession means something. And it says that, that because you say this, I will build my church. This word, iglesias, is a, is a unique word. It's, it simply means called out ones. And it's, it's sometimes we misunderstand it. But once we call out, 
Once we call out that he is the Christ, upon that confession, he can build. He can establish some things. He can begin to do things in my life. Once I call out his name, once I declare who he is, that is where he can begin to build and certain things can happen. So let's read on. And I will give you the keys or I will give you dominion or authority in heaven. Whether you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is simply trying to communicate to us you don't have to live in the limitations of earth anymore. You don't have to accept sin and anger and war and hatred and selfishness. You can truly step out of that because that's what Christ did for us. The greatest love that he's ever bestowed upon us was when he was on the cross. He did not force himself on that cross. He, he was at peace in doing it. And at the same time, we as Christians are making that decisions and we're confessing him and we're identifying now with him that whatever he allows, we want to allow in heaven. Whatever he doesn't want on earth, that's what we don't want. We come in agreement with him. It's not just our opinion. We begin to model our lives according to his promises, what he has conquered for us. So let's read on in verse 20. It says, then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was the, Jesus the Christ. Now why did he do that? We're talking about it right now. We're, we're confessing it openly. And he's telling his disciples, don't. Because certain things hadn't happened yet. The third day hadn't happened yet. So just a few more verses here. It says, From that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. Again, he says, If you misunderstand the order of how things need to happen, this and this and this has to happen, before this truth can be truly walked out. And so he's communicating that to the disciples. And he, let, let's just read this. This sounds, it says here, his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a city of peace, really, and suffer many things. There's a battle going on over his life. The elders and the chief priests and the scribes will be killed, will kill him, and be raised on the third day. He already knew what was going to happen. He already knows what's going to happen in our lives. He knows. That's why he asks us to come to him. He knows the destiny of mankind. He knows, but he wants to save us. He wants to support us. He wants us to return to him. He wants us to live in his sight, not in our pain, not in our disappointment, not in the world's struggles. So here he communicates to us a little further as we read on. Then Peter took him aside love this. This is kind of our, our experience here. Aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it, you Lord, this shall not happen to you. So he said, I, I don't want this to happen to you. Let's reverse this. We'll tell you something. God doesn't want certain things to happen to us. God does not want certain things to happen to us. That's why he came. But Peter here did not understand that. And so he says, hey, hey, no, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. So let's read on. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. And there you have that struggle again. Who's in charge? Is God? Do I want him to bind things in heaven and on earth? Or am I trying to control what I bind and what I loosen, how I live my life? Do I try to live it in my power or do I live it in God's power? And so we see the struggle and he says actually this and it's kind of, he says, Peter, you're a stumbling block to me. You're stopping me from my destiny. Get thee behind me. You're stopping me from my destiny because this is the purpose that I came for. Okay? And I'm going to tell you something 
I want to reverse this for us. The enemy wants to be our stumbling block from us experiencing the third day life. He will do things to us. He'll want us to compromise. He will want us to do things because they have to do with self-preservation. Every one of us are really caught up in self-preservation. We are. So let's go on a little bit more. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. See, self-preservation has to stop. And take up his cross and follow me. Now this is actually before Jesus Christ even died on the cross. See, this, this concept of cross business is not, I have one around my neck. It's not jewelry in those days. It was, it was nasty stuff. The Romans wouldn't even... No Roman could ever be crucified. If you were a Roman citizen, that was beneath, that could never happen to you. Only the enemies of the Romans could be crucified. And so this, this thing is that he's actually saying, he says, you need to pick up your cross. You need to really understand this battle that we're in. And so he goes and follow me. Verse 25, it says, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So if you're into self-preservation, if you're into wanting things for yourself, protecting yourself, wanting your own desires, that's when you're going to have conflict. Why did Jesus Christ die on the cross? To preserve himself or to give us life? Why did he suffer? Why did he go through what he went through? It's because he had a desire a relationship. Why do we go through what we go through? Because we want a relationship with God. It kind of goes back and forth. This the third day life experience needs to be understood in its fullest. Only a couple more verses here. For what profit is it a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange? See, one day we're going to stand before God and whatever has been bound in heaven, bound on earth, or whatever has been loosed on, on earth, and has been loosed in heaven, if I do not understand that principle, if I don't understand that he is calling me out, I'm a called out person who can truly receive Jesus Christ into my heart, into my life. If I don't understand that, then I will live struggling, going back and forth, back and forth. And this is one of the things that God's trying to communicate to us here in this portion of scripture. Just a couple more verses here. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and he will reward each according to his works, or the decisions that you've made. Have you confessed? Not only have you confessed, but have you picked up his cross and followed him on a daily basis? Have you chosen that you're no longer going to live in selfishness, or are you living your life in surrender towards Christ? Read on. But surely I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of coming in his kingdom. And what this simply means, that he was about to establish it, it was just a few days away, and that was the third day kingdom principle of how we're to live our lives. Okay, so let's kind of break this down real quick. If you can put the next screen up. I simply just put it up there like this. We struggle with this. We have to come to a place where we deny ourselves. That's a decision we can only make or live for ourselves. And we struggle in between that. Come on. We struggle in between. Take up your cross or ignore the cross. We struggle right in between that. Many times. I don't want to do that. No, that's too hard. We go back and forth in the struggle. It says follow Christ or follow the world. I mean, come on, that's... We are tempted on a consistent basis with the things that are going on around us. Lose our life for his sake or save your life for your own sake. See, there, there's, a, there's a distinction here. Lose your life for his sake. If you don't understand who you are in Christ, you're trying to live it out in your own power, in your own strength. You're trying to make this thing happen. For your own sake, you're trying to hold on to life. 
You know, I, before I became a Christian, I thought, man, I, I'm not doing this Christian thing. There is absolutely no way I'm doing this because I have, I, I'm not turning my life over. I'm not surrendering. I want to have some control. And I didn't realize that I was being controlled all the time. And I thought I was in control. And when I gave my life to Christ for the first time, I experienced freedom. But I was deceived in that mindset. You know, I, I was being bound. See, whatever is bound on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed in heaven. But I didn't understand that my confession and my relationship with God actually sets me free. I don't want to live in the first day or the second day. I want to live in the victory of Jesus Christ who's conquered it for me. I want to live the third day life to its fullest. I don't have to fear. I don't live in fear anymore. I don't live in intimidation. I don't live in, oh, God, I just screwed up again. Because I am free in Christ Jesus. So it goes on to say this, forsake the world. You, you know, the longer you live, the more you realize this world screwed up. <laughs> so why do I, I can really slowly say, I forsake this world. And gain the world, the true world, the kingdom of God. Keep your soul or lose your soul. You'll go insane trying to live it in your own power, in your own strength. Share his reward and glory or lose his reward and glory. God has every intention of making our life better. So when you read this and you just dig into it, I want to just go one more scripture real quick because I think it will help us understand. Peter. This is Peter, all right? So in, uh, we, got, we go to 1 Peter. And just nine verses. We're just real quick trying to nail this down. I got five minutes, okay? It says, therefore, laying aside all malice and deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. That's the world. You hang out, and this is what you see. Lying, laying aside, malice. I mean, there's so much malice going on. I don't know, it doesn't matter where you go in family, and government, it doesn't matter. Community, it's there. All deceit. You, you, you ever feel like that? You know, I have an appointment on Monday to take my car to the dealership. I've already been there twice. I feel I'm being deceived. Right? Hypocrisy. We're, not, we're just not being honest. Envy, evil, speaking. So we have this. Now let's go on to what it, what it really says to us. Verse 3. Uh, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Verse 5. You also are living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So this is Peter communicating what he's learned. Verse 6. There, therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Who do I believe he is? Do I confess it? It's not, I can't just confess, I have to live out that confession. Because he builds on that. Verse 7. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. That's what I said, before I believed, I didn't want to do this. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders were to ask become the chief cornerstone. If you don't believe, it's a stumbling block. If you do believe, it's a precious cornerstone. It's your foundational understanding of life. See, Peter, in that moment when he confessed, that's when he cried, I'm going to build my church upon. You're, I'm going to be the cornerstone for you to build upon. And here it's saying that to us again. Now, verse, it goes on to say to us in verse 8, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. That's what the world struggles with. It's what I struggle with. And sometimes we, as Christians, struggle. Because God's saying, hey, listen, don't do that. And we have to make up our mind. Are we going to deny ourselves and follow him and pick up our cross? 
or are we going to do our selfish little thing? Which one is it? They stumbled being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Notice what it's saying. He is, has no intention for them to be cut off. We've all been appointed towards God's love. He's called every one of us out. I'm going to show you this. It goes on to say this to us in verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim, and that's the word confess, you can proclaim the praises of him who called you out. Remember? Who do you say that I am? That's the church, the called out ones. When you confess Jesus Christ as your, you confess what he has done, that's where the third day life begins, and that's where God can break through. If you are concentrating on trying to do it in your own power and in selfishness, it will never, ever work. Live in the third day life, because that is where the abundance is. That's where the breakthrough is. It says, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. God wants that for us. God desires that for us. If you just bow your heads, who do you say that I am? That's what Jesus is asking. If he is, then let him be the Lord of your life. If he is the conqueror of death, hell, and grave, let him manifest that in your life. Don't play this game back and forth. Don't allow your life one day to be on and one day to be off. Let him continually call you out. Pick up his cross daily and follow him. Don't don't think that he's trying to stop you. He is trying to release you into your greatness. He's trying to call you out into his marvelous light. Royal priesthood, a holy nation, a special people. He's appointed everyone in this room to experience that. Every one of you. But many of us struggle with it because we're not willing to to let go of self. And I understand that. But self needs to get behind you. And Christ needs to be honored. If you're here today, you know. You know that he is. But you're not really living it out. Let him live it out in you. Don't live in the torn, in the broken in the first day or the second day, but live in his sight, fully blessed, fully favored, fully fulfilled in him. Let's stand together. I'm going to do something a little different today. And I, I think there's times when you do because you need to. See, this, this was one of those things where Peter was personally challenged to make the decision. And that affected his life. He had several struggles through his life to come to an understanding of that in a clearer way, didn't he? I mean, he denied him. He, he struggled several times. Even after he preached on Pentecost, he struggled with some decisions. We all do. But I'm going to tell you, Making him the Lord of your life is number one. Who do you say? Who do you say that he is? And I, I'm going to ask you just to make a decision to come forward. If you believe that Christ is the son of the living God, I'm, this is a, I'm a complete altar call for everyone. If you believe that, I want you just to step out and just stand here. It's a step of confession because we believe in our heart. We confess with our mouth that he is Lord. So just come and just stand. We might, you might not even be able to make it to the front because there's so many people are going to come. But I believe it's, it's for us just an acknowledgement that we believe that he is. Okay? It's just an acknowledgement. Now, the next step. You guys can come up there if you want. It's okay. Come on down. You're going to go out that door anyway. We'll dismiss right here and head right outside the door.
this is where the problem is. Sometimes we're forced into making these confessions. I don't want to force you into this confession. I want you to acknowledge whether this is real or not. You know, you could actually be standing up here and still not truly believe it. But it's up to you as an individual to make up your mind whether he is or he isn't. What, you don't believe this because I say it or some other preacher says it. Or you believe it because he is the son of the living God. You are Christ, the son of the living God. And upon that confession, he can build something. He can build your life. He can build hope in you. He can build grace in you. He can, he can heal. He can restore. He can change things in your life. But the found, if the foundation is not right, the building is not going to be established in the right way. So we're confessing here today that he is the Christ. And we're not going to get in the way. And we're going to let him loose some things in us. But we're also asking him to bind some things in us. You know there's some stuff in us, some lies, some deceptions, some things that are not healthy. Lord, bind those things. Upon that confession, Lord, you can build. You can build our lives. We choose today to again believe that you, you sent your word, you sent your principles, your spirit, Lord, to teach us again, to give us knowledge and awareness that you desire to bring freedom and health and liberty and abundance into our lives. You've come to give us life and that more abundance. We just ask, Lord, that as we leave this place today, that we leave with an awareness that you are the Christ and let you live. Break selfishness in us. Break deceptions in us. Malice and deceit. And let us live our lives in a way that we live a confessional life that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Let's live a third day life from this day forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can you introduce yourself to somebody and say, hey, my name is Andrew, or whatever it is. As you leave, enjoy your afternoon. Remember the National Day of Prayer. Remember, baptism is coming up in a couple of weeks as well. If you desire to be baptized, thank you, thank you for being here.